Welcome to conversation number 785. I got the question, in eternity, where will Jesus be? We know that um, Ephesians 1.10 says that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together and want all things in Christ, whether they be in heaven or whether they be in earth. <coughs> so in eternity, both heaven and earth are reconciled back to God through Christ. Christ is in charge of both realms. But since a person, now I understand Jesus as God can be everywhere, but as a man, because he's both fully God and fully man, as a man, where is Jesus going to be, is the question. And so, um, I, I believe he's going to be on the earth. So that's the answer to that question. But let, let me give you um, scripture, tell you how I came to that conclusion. Um, first off, Revelation 4 talks about the throne room. It's in heaven at the time that John sees it. And really what we're concerned about is the throne room because um, where God, where Jesus dwells, see, when Genesis chapter 1, when God made Adam, or man, he gave man dominion over his works. So both heaven and earth is given over to man to have dominion, to subdue it, to keep control over everything he made. That's the, that's the purpose of God making man. And ultimately that one, the man, which will be the one having the dominion is the Lord Jesus Christ. What ends up happening is that Adam fails in his responsibility to uh, keep dominion over the earth because he sins. So he basically loses control over the earth to Satan. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says that Satan is the God of this world. Ephesians 2, 2 says that Satan is the prince of the power of the air. So both heavenly realms and the earth, whereas God originally gave dominion of those realms to man, uh, man, because of his sin, gave them over to Satan. Now, Jesus Christ, when he becomes fully man, so he's the second Adam, he lives a perfect life, he never sins, so that means he never gave dominion, or, or never never lost his ability to regain dominion from Satan. The, the Satan, so man has dominion over heaven and earth, originally, but then Satan gets that dominion due to man's sin, and the reason is because God said in Genesis 2.17 that in the day that thou eatest of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt surely die. So he, you can't have a dead man ruling. You know, it's just like um, somebody, let's say Bill Gates, he's got billions of dollars uh, to his name. He, he can rule over his Microsoft empire and his foundations, whatever else he controls. But when he dies, he has no control over those things because a dead man can't control it. Now, he can give it to his heir, you know, but um, so that's what, now Adam, he relinquished control of the earth and the heaven to Satan because he was no longer responsible for, um, or he was no longer, he was not a good steward of the earth and the heaven because he sinned. And so uh, Satan ends up being the usurper of that authority. Now when Jesus comes, he lives a perfect life. He dies on a cross for our sin. But the, the issue is death and hell have to be conquered because the reason Adam or man can't rule over the earth and the heaven is because man is dead in his trespasses and sins. So a dead man, Bill Gates, when he's dead, is not going to rule over the Microsoft empire or his foundation or anything else because he's dead. Uh, anything else on the earth, I should say. So too, uh, Adam, when he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he died. In the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So his soul dies, and now he can't, he can't rule. He's a dead man, so he can't rule over heaven and earth. 
Satan becomes the ruler. So that what that means is, although the rule is given to man, Satan is the usurper and has rule over heaven and earth as long as man is dead. Jesus comes as the perfect man. He rises from the dead. He defeats death and hell. But uh, so Jesus now has control over heaven and earth. That's why it says that, um, again, Colossians 2, it says that he, that Christ spoiled principalities and powers, triumphing over them in the cross. Colossians 2, uh, verse 14 or 15, somewhere in there. He triumphs over the principalities and powers through the cross. So that means now uh, Christ has the rule over heaven and earth because he is a man and um, the perfect man. So he, death and hell, he's not defeated by that. He beats death and hell. Revelation 1, 18, Jesus says, I have the keys of hell and death in my hand. So since he has the keys, he has control over it. Just like if I had the keys to my house. And I have control over my house. I can, I can enter it. I can forbid other people from entering it because I own that house. I can't do that with any other property because I don't own any other thing. I just own my house. So I have control over that. So Jesus, so too, he, he, he has control over heaven and earth because he's got the keys of hell and death. So he's got control over those, those realms. And that's what kept man from having dominion uh, over heaven and earth that God gave to man. But, uh, of course, there are, it's more than just having one man. You've got to remember, it says that uh, in Genesis 1.26, when God made Adam, he told him to uh, have dominion over it and subdue it. So, now, my house, it's different, just a, you know, just a small house, it's nothing. I don't need uh, a maid, a butler, I don't need a bunch of servants, you know. It'd be nice to have them, maybe, so I don't have to do it, the, so much work at home. But, um... But it, it, survi it survives without that. You know. But when you come to heaven and earth, I mean, those realms are a lot bigger than my house. You, know? uh, you need more people than just, uh, just one man. So Jesus Christ, the perfect man, has the keys of hell and death, but, you, but God has established a governmental structure of thrones, principalities, powers, mights, dominions. He's done that both in heaven and on the earth. So you can think of that as sort of the organizational chart. I mentioned the example of, you know, that I work for a school district. Uh, I have people under me, but I have people over me. And there's this, just this big organizational chart. There, there's 4,000 employees where I work. Um, I'm over three. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so there are 3,996 other employees that um, I'm not over, but there's the superintendent, there's the board, school board, and they're the ones who are over the whole 4,000. But you know, they can't watch 4,000 people at the same time. And they're not just watching the people. They're, we got 47 schools, I think it is. So you got all these schools, you got all these buildings, you got all these employees, you got all these students, you got parents, uh, you got the community. Uh, you've got just a whole big mass of people you've got to deal with and structures and organization and everything. So you need, in this case, 4,000 employees to take care of, I don't know how many students we have, probably close to 40,000 would be my guess. So you, you got 4,000 employees to take care of 40,000 students. Well, in heavenly places, and so, but that's just one school district. There are, I want to say there's something like 50 some counties in the state of Alabama. This is just one county. You got all these other counties. And that's just the state of Alabama. Then you got the other 49 states of America. And that's just the United States. Then you got all the other countries in the world. Uh, and Jesus Christ is going to be over all of that. So I, I mentioned all that to say if 4,000 employees are needed for a school district, um, how many people that are needed in all those the governmental structures in heaven and earth well a lot more than four thousand we'll, we'll put it that way okay um i'm sure of a number in the millions so sure god uh jesus has got dominion of heaven and earth back from satan because he's defeated hell and death but only those who uh believe the gospel and are saved are going to 
be part of the governmental structure. So for today, it means you recognize your sin, you trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for your sin. God gives you the gift of eternal life, and then it's up to Christ to determine what position you will have. In Ephesians chapter 1, it says, uh, What is the exceeding greatness of His power to us who believe, which He wrought in Christ according to the working of His mighty power? According to the working of His mighty power, which He wrought in Christ, when He raised Him from the dead, far above all principality, power, might, and dominion in every name that is named and made him to be the head of the church, uh, made him uh, uh, be over all things and to be the head, and he's given all things unto uh, him to be the head, and uh, I'm messing up this quote, but <laughs> basically Christ is the head, and all the positions in heavenly places are going to be filled by the body of Christ. And since he is the head, far above all principality and power, Christ is the one in charge of figuring out who gets in there. So you got all these people who are saved, but you know, just like me, uh, I do good at the central office handling the money, but uh, don't put me in a room of kids trying to teach a bunch of, say, first graders, being a teacher of first graders. I'd be ter absolutely terrible at that. Um, it's still a job with a school board. It's still very important, but uh, that's just not my specialty. That's not my thing. So, so too, when it comes to heavenly places, there are different kinds of jobs. Well, it depends on what sound doctrine you have in your inner man and what your training is to be for, to determine what position you have in that structure. I mean, ultimately, with the, uh, where I work, Every single hire and fire and transfer and all of that is approved by the board. So you got a board of seven people who determine, you know, basically all 4,000 employees. So they're over all of that. They're, they're you know, they're at that, that highest level there. Jesus Christ is the one then who decides, okay, you get a throne, you get a principality, you get a power, you get a might, you get a dominion, or you're in every name that is named. And he does that based upon the sound doctrine in your inner man and how you've applied it. So what kind of education and experience you have, just like at my job. I mean, the board ultimately is the one that appointed me to say you're going to be in charge of giving out the, paying the bills, basically. Um, and the reason is because I've got the training for that. They will not put me in a, in a classroom to teach uh, first graders because I don't have the education or the experience to do that. Uh, yeah, I'd be terrible at that. So, so too, Jesus looks at each person in the body of Christ and he determines which position you have. And he's the one above it all because remember, he got the dominion of the heaven and the earth back from from um, from Satan. But yeah, you gotta understand, it doesn't mean that everything is reconciled back to him right away. Satan is still the god of this world because Jesus doesn't have his structure in place to have full control over heaven and the earth. It says in Acts 2 that uh, this same Jesus whom ye have crucified, this same Jesus, uh, God has made him both Lord and Christ. So he is Lord. He sat on the throne. It says, sit, the Lord said unto my Lord, God the Father said unto God the Son, sit thou on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So he said, so basically you got to make the enemies, basically you've got a structure in place right now in heaven and earth that has a lot of the usurper, Satan and the fallen angels are in there. And so um, until it's all subdued, till his enemies are made his footstool, then Satan still is the god of this world. He's still the prince of the power of the air. He still has a lot of influence in heavenly places and on the earth. And so until Jesus has all the governmental structure ready till his enemies are made his footstool and Christ has the people ready to fill both heavenly places and the earth then uh, Satan will continue to reign. Ultimately of course a uh, God the Father is still the possessor of heaven and earth and so God is really God the Father is over everything. Uh, you see in Job 1 and Job chapter 2 that Satan has and his angels have to appear before God and report to them. They can't just do whatever they want uh, because God is still over all. 
but uh, but he's still in that usurper position. And then all things aren't reconciled back to God until they're under the headship of Jesus Christ, which doesn't happen until uh, both heaven and earth are reconciled, until the, those people are in those places. So when the rapture takes place, the fullness of the Gentiles are come in. And we are called the body of Christ. And we will rule in the thrones, principalities, powers, mights, dominions, every name that is named. We will rule in those positions in heavenly places. Then, once that takes place, once the rapture takes place, then God resumes Israel's program. And um, Israel will end up, after some time, they will make a seven-year covenant with the nation of Israel. I'm sorry, with the Antichrist. Israel makes a seven-year covenant with the Antichrist. And uh, halfway through the tribulation period, the Antichrist becomes the one world ruler. So three and a half years into the tribulation period. And then he has um, kings under him. And then at the end of the tribulation period, Jesus Christ comes back. He defeats the Antichrist and his forces. They're cast into a lake of fire. They're destroyed. And then um, believing Israel is resurrected. If they're not alive at the time, they're resurrected. And so then Israel goes into God's kingdom on earth. And it's the marriage supper of the Lamb. Revelation 19, Revelation 21 calls Israel the bride of Christ or the Lamb's wife. So um, they are the bride and uh, we as the Gentiles in heavenly places are the body of Christ. So the bride of Christ is on the earth. And so then Christ then, at that time, since now all the positions in heaven and earth are filled, then everything is reconciled back to God. Uh, Jesus Christ, as the perfect man, rules in both realms, heaven and earth. So then the question that was posed is where, where is he actually physically located? Because, you know, there is only one... Uh, well, Jesus is God and God is everywhere as a man, because he is fully man as well, he can only be in one place at one time. So where is he when um, in eternity? Where does he rule and reign from? Is it from heaven or from the earth? And the answer is the earth. And the reason is because it's all about that throne. He's the one that sits on the throne at the right hand of God, which is the position of power. And Psalm 48 tells you that the uh, Mount Zion is... Uh, is on the earth. It says, um, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God in the mountain of His holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth. So it's on the earth. Is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. On the sides of the north is the position of rulership. So, um, so that's showing Jesus Christ the king, the great king, king of kings, lord of lords, he is sitting on the throne on the earth because that's where Mount Zion is located. Um, and so he's going to rule and reign heaven and earth from the earth. And um, and so you say, well, that, does that mean we're not going to be with Jesus in heaven? I mean, we're in heaven, so are we not going to be with him? Well, yeah, we'll be with him too. But he's on the earth. How does that work? I don't know how it works. I can tell you, though, that um, in John 1, 51, Jesus tells uh, Nathaniel, he says, uh, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So the Son of Man is Jesus Christ. He's ruling and reigning heaven and earth. Hebrews 1.14 says that angels, the purpose of angels is they are ministers for those who will be heirs of salvation. So uh, Jesus Christ rules and reigns and then angels are ascending and descending upon the Son of Man because uh, He's ruling and reigning and the angels are sent to be ministers of those who are heirs of salvation. So I sort of think of it as, now remember we are the body of Christ, Christ is the head. So the head is sitting physically located on the earth, but we are his body. The body is connected to that. And so uh, the fact that angels ascend and descend upon the Son of Man, uh, that tells me that there is a connection or the neck. It's just like your body. You know, my head 
is separated. It's it's a good distance. Well, standing up, my head is maybe five feet from my feet, uh, and I'm close to two meters away from my feet. It's um, but yet it's still part of the body. It's still part of me. It's just there's a distance there, and the way that the body is connected to the head is through the neck. So if we're the body of Christ, we're in heavenly places. Um, and Jesus is on the earth and angels of God are ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. That means there's a connection. And actually John 1 is further progressive revelation to what Jacob saw in the book of Genesis of that ladder that, uh, where he saw people ascending and descending upon this ladder that went into heaven. So we find that there is a ladder, which the ladder ends up being the neck of Christ, and we are his body. So we're connected to the body. So my foot, it's a good five feet from my head, but it's still part of my body. It's still one with my body. So you don't say, well, the foot's not part of the body because it's too far from the head. No, it's all connected, so it's still part of the body. It still gets nourishment from it. So uh, it's the same thing for us. We're the body of Christ. We're in heavenly places and the head is on the earth, well, the neck then would be Jacob's ladder or where the angels of God ascend and descend upon the Son of Man. And so the reason, and so really his whole body as the perfect man is gonna be, his head is gonna be on the earth and then his body is gonna be in heaven and we are his body. Uh, and so, and then of course, he is one with the bride of Christ, which is Israel, because the two become one when they get married. And so they are on the earth. So uh, answer to the question is, uh, is Jesus going to be ruling from heaven or earth? The answer is his physical body will be on the earth because that's where his throne is. And uh, that's the sides of the north. On the joy of the whole earth is the sides of the north, Mount Zion, the city of the great king. So Jesus is physically located on the earth. But he is the head and his body is in heaven, that's us. And there's the neck or the ladder that connects the two realms or the angels ascend and descend. And just like my foot is part of my body, you don't say, you know, as long as my foot is connected to my body as part of the head, then you say, well, that's Eric. Um, you know, because it's part of me. So it's the same thing for us since we're the body of Christ. Then you would say in heaven, you'd say, well, that's Christ because we are part of him. So Jesus physically is going to be on the earth ruling in eternity. But since we are his body, we're connected to him. Uh, then Jesus is also physically located in heaven, but that's his body and that's us. Uh, and he's physically located on the earth as well because of Israel being his bride. Just like um, I can go out and I represent the school system because I'm an employee, I'm part of the school system, so I can say things for the school system. You know, when the finance director is interviewed on TV, he's speaking on behalf of the school system. He's not speaking on behalf of himself. Um, so too, as the body of Christ, we'll be speaking on behalf of Christ. We'll really be ruling on behalf of Christ. We're part of his body, and so uh, we will be... Um, so Christ is on in, in heaven in eternity through us as his body, but his physical body um, is going to be located on the throne in Mount Zion on the sides of the north on the earth. Thanks for watching.